Pokemon have just released two new trading card products, and I think you're going to love them. These are the Shiny Zacian and the Shiny Zamazenta Premium Collection Boxes. And the interesting thing about these two boxes right here is that they are Sword and Shield products, even though we're in the Scarlet and Violet era, which is not unheard of for Pokemon to do at all, but it's just interesting. And of course, these are from the Crown Zenith set, one of the most popular sets of the recent year. Prices for the single cards have been coming down a little bit, which is very good news for collectors out there. But we know how good the artwork is from sets like this. We know how beautiful the cards are. So I'm never going to turn down the chance to open some Crown Zenith, so let's do it. Yo, so guys, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're all doing good. My name is Randolph. And as you saw, today we're opening some Crown Zenith. However, before we do that, we are going to open up some Silver Tempest. I've been opening up some Silver Tempest on this channel in recent videos to try and pull that Lugia card that I still haven't pulled. And I would like to pull it, okay? I would love to do that. So without any further ado, let's get these packs open. Silver Tempest on Pokeren has been dropped. By the way, the price has come down a lot. So make sure you guys are going to check that out. If you want to also try your look at getting a Lugia card, be my guest. Speaking of be my guest, Disney 100 sold out like crazy. Thank you guys for the support on that one. We are going to try and get some more. We are going to also try and stock more non Pokemon TCGs on the store as well. So more Wise Swartz, more One Piece style TCGs. Anything in particular you guys want, make sure you do let us know. But this video is all about this video. So let's focus on that and a little bit less with the plugs. First pack, we've got a Baltoy, Spinarak, and a Reunculus Hollow. Not bad to start off with the Hollow. And it's weird, this entire video is not, like, not containing Scarlet and Violet at all. We are going to bring some Scarlet and Violet back soon. I've got a big giveaway that I'm bringing to the channel ASAP, maybe in the next week or so. Content has slowed down a little bit, but I hope you guys don't mind. Even if I don't post every day at the minute, there are going to be stretches where I don't do that. It doesn't mean I've gone away from the channel like before, okay? Before, I was kind of not focused on it at all. Now I am though, okay? So if you see me not post a few days in a row, don't worry. I haven't forgotten about you guys. It's just that probably other things have been getting a bit more intense in that period of time, okay? So no worries, guys, there at all. Pokemon is still moving. Ace is still moving. I'm still moving on my Discord, on all the channels that you want to follow me. It's still there with Pokemon. It's just videos sometimes can take a little bit more to get made these days. We've got a Rotom Reverse Hollow in the final. Oh my gosh, we have a Furious... What? Furious Ode Girl Rainbow Supporter Card. I'm not going to lie, I'm really glad they kind of went away from the uh, Rainbow Rares. It's a cool rarity. It's a rare rarity to get. Interesting way of saying it. But nowadays with the Scarlet and Violet era, the special illustrated rares are so much better, right? You still get that texture, that rainbow sort of texture on those cards, but you have more detail. We care about the artwork. We don't care about the whole thing being shiny. We care about the artwork itself of the trainers, of the Pokemon, of the world that they've built inside these cards. But yeah, I love doing Pokemon. I wish I could upload every day. I really do. We're going to get there. I've had good spells recently, guys, right? But anyway, Togodomaru, there we go. We've got a Hunchcrow and a Frostlass. Our first pack so far from Scarlet... Sorry, sorry. From Silver Tempest, sorry. That hasn't had a hit. Hollow or greater. Let's hope we get back to winning ways with the fourth pack right here. We've got four from the back. Let's go. We have a Water Energy. Nice. Toxic Croak. Whoop, dropped the card right there. It was a Jinx, Toxifex, Drowsy, Growlithe, Mistrevious, Whalmer, Murkrow, Dewpider, and a Noivan. Okay, so another non hollow. All right, here we go, guys. The final pack of the video for Silver Tempest before we do move on to the main event, which is the Crown Zenith. Of course, Toracat, Palasand, Dragonair, Sandy Gast, Redicant, Holucha, Rufflet, Vulpix, Slurpuff. And an Archaeops Hollow. Okay, so three hits out of five, I believe, there. Two Hollows and a secret Rainbow Rear. Not bad at all, but it's not the Lugia that we came to see. It is what it is. We'll try next time. Here are the code cards, by the way, guys. And now let's get into our first premium collection box. So, Crown Zenith, let's talk about that real quick. Of course, a great set, a fantastic set. I feel like so many people out there really do take too much care or too much focus on the price of the cards and forget about the projections or forget about the future or longevity of a certain set. There's a code card. I'm just unboxing this right now while I talk to you guys. Summer Zenta promo. Love this, by the way. I love Zacian and Zamidenta, two iconic titans from the Sword and Shield era. And as you guys know, I love the Sword and Shield era. The shiny pin right there and then the shiny figure. I love this, man. I actually do love these figures. Pop one there and I'll put the, I'll put the Zacian here when we get it. Some sleeves right here. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a massive fan of these sleeves. I think they could have done better with those. And then 10 packs of Crown Zenith. A good amount as well. A good amount for a collection box, by the way. Let's get these open, guys. Crown Zenith. So as I was saying, those who are veterans, I guess you could say. Not veterans, but those who have got a bit of experience in like the waves of Pokemon can probably tell you this as well. It's not always about the price of the cards there and then. So while these are in print while these are here to stay the price is still relevant because obviously people are opening them people are trying to fill their binders people are grading them but when you go through eras it's always it always helps to take note of what happened why did it happen and what does it mean for future sets because even me i've learned a lot in this past two three years since we had the big massive boom oh here we go the foot no way the first pack we've pulled a hisuian zoroark v star and the final card behind that is a charizard v let's go that is top stuff right there and this is an example of why crown Zenith is such a good set but yeah in the last two years i learned a lot we had the huge pokemon boom i couldn't get rid of cards fast enough in, that, in a sense of like anything that i wanted to sell did sell whether it was a graded slab whether it was a raw card whether it was a booster box in the store everything just went like immediately people would buy anything and 
you know, people were warning of the junk slab era for sure, but at the time it wasn't really a thing because, sorry, it was a thing, but it wasn't showing signs of slowing down in, in its peak. You know, you could sell anything. Whereas now the market has normalized a little bit and most people think, oh my gosh, the prices are so low. And it isn't that the prices are so low. It's just that people have kind of understood now. People have either lost money or the markets or have changed or people are back to work now. The climate has just changed for a lot of the people out there. The state of play has changed as well. And those who've been around the block since, you know, Watsi, et cetera, called this, they knew this would happen. Maybe it took a little bit longer for it to happen. And I'm sure they thought the same as well. I'm sure they reaped the rewards of the market going absolutely crazy as well. But my point being is it's always good to look at other sets and historic sets and see what happened there and apply it to things. And I'm, the reason I'm saying all this, the reason I'm kind of giving this big backstory into Crown Zenith is that you could look at other sets, you know. So you don't compare Crown Zenith with Brilliant Stars, really. Brilliant Stars is a main set. It's a set. Oh, we have here a Radiant Charizard. Very, very nice. This is a perfect example, actually. Charizard, um, this Radiant card right here. If this was back in 2021, 2020 era, I could grade that and sell it immediately, probably for no less than 50 pounds, you know, because it's a Charizard, you know, and even though Charizard is still popular, I'm sure this card right here is still worth a decent amount, but nothing like it would have been back in the day because the hype was so, so real, especially with a Charizard. But anyway, you can't compare Crown Zenith with Brilliant Stars. The obvious reason being Brilliant Stars is a main series set and Crown Zenith is a holiday set, but they are both recent sets. They both have special arts in them. They both have really cool cards in them, um, you know, they both have subsets of cards i think yeah they do <laughs> yeah silver tempest then or, or any of the set in the series with a with a you know a subset you can compare the two but crown zenith is limited you know obviously and it will be limited in the future as will of course brilliant stars but you would want to compare crown zenith with something like hidden fate something that is a holiday set something that's a special set has an etb with 10 cards in it a promo in it they both follow the same the same theme almost both have a subset in them as well galarian gallery and then obviously the shiny vault so I would start by first of all comparing those two and the fact of the matter is Hidden Fates was rapidly accessible for a long time. People would pay retail for the ETVs, etc. Um, there was a big stir about it actually at the time. People selling them for way too much. Oh, here we go. Nice. Chorus's experiment. I don't think I've ever pulled that card. That's a beautiful card right there. You got the, the Great Ball here. The other type of balls are there. Pokeball too. Really, really nice card. Glory and Gallery. Speak of the devil. But of course now Hidden Fates is starting to rise. And what does that mean for Crown Zenith? Does that mean Crown Zenith is going to continue to rise? Or will it rise? Not necessarily. It's not guaranteed to. But it's a similar kind of set. So I would use Hidden Fates as a guideline to make my decisions on. And what I would say about Hidden Fates is yes, while it was a massively accessible set and while people really maybe inflated certain cards in that set because Hidden Fates in general was a hype set. For example, a lot of the Baby Shinies. Baby Shinies was something that hurt me a little bit because I, I really liked the Baby Shinies. I thought they were great. And at the time, they would sell like hotcakes, okay? So what, what did I do? I opened way too many cards. I bought way too many Baby Shinies. I graded way too many Baby Shinies. And now you probably think, well, actually, those cards that I was thinking were going to be worth, you know, 60 plus are now probably like 10, 20, 15, which is still not a bad price for them. It's just not what I necessarily thought they were to be. Again, while I'm saying that is there will be cards in this set right here in Crown Zenith that now we think are sick cards, awesome cards. And then those cards will start to drop in price and we'll start to worry. And we'll think, damn it, man, maybe I made the wrong decision by buying those cards or keeping those cards or wanting to pull those cards. Then as the set comes out of print, as Scarlet and Violet starts to get into its era and everyone starts to forget about Crown Zenith, the, the, the supply dries up a little bit. People are keeping them. People are, you know, lock them away. Certain cards will start to rise and the certain cards that will start to rise are the ones that make loads of Sense. For example, in Hidden Fate, the Shiny Charizard, of course, will continue to be a strong card, you know? Umbreon will continue to be a strong card. Mewtwo, Espeon will continue to be a strong card. Other cards will struggle. Oh, nice. We've got a Duskull right here. Duskull Art Rare. And then a Pangaro. What I think will happen with Crown Zenith is, as we have this supply right now, as everyone has ETBs, as everyone has collection boxes, as everyone wants these cards because they think in the future it's going to be worth a lot i think the price will slowly start to drop and drop and drop and drop people will get worried people will panic and start selling it getting rid of it and thinking damn my investment's not great but then in two three four five plus years crown zenith will probably end up being a really strong set because of that subset because of the certain cards that are in that subset will be hard to pull and are harder to pull so therefore those cards will be oh there we go another see another radiant charizard that's two in one etv right here so back in the day people would be going crazy i would be making the way bigger reaction but i don't know i guess in simpler words people seem to panic a lot people seem to overhype a set they go full into that set they lose money the price goes down so they 
they think, damn it, I made the wrong decision. Then they start selling like hotcakes. When in reality, if you just made more of a reserved choice and more of a calculated choice, you'll reap the rewards, you know? So instead of panicking, instead of going trying to scalp, instead of trying to stack too many boxes, just think, I love Crimes on it. I want to collect a few ETVs and keep them sealed. Nice one. Good job. If you've got the resources for that, the financials for that, go for it. And also, I really love the Radiant Charizard card. And even though it's dropping a little bit, even though people aren't really loving it, I want to buy four or five of these because I think it's a great card. You buy them, you get them cool. Maybe it doesn't do anything at all, but then in four, five, six years, you look back into your collection and think, damn, I've got four or five Ace 10 Radiant Charizards. I'm going to sell those now and you'll see the price and the price will probably be more than what you paid for them. Obviously, you've got actual inflation to deal with as well. But what I'm trying to say is those who, and I've said this all the time and many people will say this, as long as you collect what you want to collect, as long as you collect what you want to enjoy, then you won't fail. You know, Because even if the price does go down a little bit, you still have had the satisfaction of owning the card. But in most cases, and I've found this with stuff that I like, the price goes up. And I'll give you some very, very clear examples here. I loved the Tag All Star set. I was absolutely in love with that set. I ordered so many. I ordered so many for my personal collection as well. I had so many boxes. If you look at my old videos, you'll see in the background just like hundreds of them packed up at the back. And yes, I opened a lot of them at the time, whereas looking back now, I probably would have rather kept them sealed. But I had the fun at that time. And because I had the fun at that time, I collected an entire binder worth of that set. I collected some really cool graded copies. I saved some regular copies of the cards as well. And I still have booster boxes just because I love the set. I really enjoyed the set. And the price is going up and up of that set. And I will really do well with that. Now, did I do the same thing with Ultra Shiny GX? No, I didn't. Did I do the same thing with other sets that I've seen? EV Heroes, I didn't do that with that set. Why? It was a mistake. I should have. I didn't love the set. I wasn't obsessed with the set. So I didn't have too many boxes. And that's completely fine. Tag All Stars, I did, you know. All I'm trying to say is put less stress on yourself by asking yourself, do you like Crown Zenith? Yes or no? Like fundamentally, do you like the set? Yes or no? Do you like the cards in the set? Yes or no? Do you want to keep some sealed? Yes or no? And if all those questions are yes, then pick a few boxes up. Get a few of the favorite cards. Try and pull your chase cards. Don't then overextend and buy too many because you think the price is going to go up or you think the set is going to be the next big thing or you think you're going to make money on it. Because when you make decisions like that, when you think something's going to happen, that's when you get hurt. It's same with gambling. When you go to a casino and you just put some money down on roulette or blackjack or whatever, or you play the slots and you have a good time with your friends and you think you know what if i win great if i don't i still have a good time then good you're doing a good thing you're enjoying yourself however when you then think oh i need to win to pay off this bill or i need to win or to get this thing that i want or i'm gambling too with too much money and losing is gonna really hurt me if you do all those things you're gonna have anxiety you're gonna have stress and you're gonna put yourself in, in an awkward position and you're not gonna enjoy it whereas if you take it slow and do what i said prior in the first example you're gonna have a great time same thing with pokemon buy the cards you want enjoy the things you like and also make some research on the big cards what is the big card is it the radiant charizard or is it the history and zodiac actually maybe neither or both or whatever just people often follow the hype follow the facebook follow the instagram and then they get lost in the source you know don't get lost in the source guys anyway that was the first premium collection box now we have the next one right here which is the uh shiny, shiny station oh sorry the term is premium figure collection i kept calling it premium collection box but it is what it is station probably my favorite out of the two i'm not sure why i think because i just like a sword more than like a shield I'm such a boy man i say that again same thing as before we got a code card right there shiny station really cool card love this one sleeves again not too fussed the figure which I will put right here for the outro. Don't you worry, guys. It will look sick. Stay with me for the outro. Pint once more, and then 10 more packs. So what was it? Two Radiant Charizards, Hisuian Zoroark, Colruses, whatever it was. Okay, so one Art Rare, two Radiants, we'll say, and then two Glaring Galleries, but two good Glaring Galleries, I would say. And then, of course, the promo. Let's see what we can do right here. And now I'll give you my thoughts on these two collection boxes. And I guess this is why I'm trying to talk about this. So you look at a set, you think with the Hidden Fates, you know, it, it, people probably forget. The, I mean, I don't even know the price of it, but you remember the, uh, the Rayquaza? Like Rayquaza collection box. That was awesome, right? Didn't you get a Pokeball in that? You got like an Ultra Ball? I'm not sure. But anyway, that set is really cool. People forget about that. So people go with the ETV being the most successful thing in Hidden Fates, but they forget about the Rayquaza set. They forget about certain boxes that that could be a good collector's item. And I, and I think these two boxes right here, the figure collection boxes, will be a great collector's item. I'll tell you why. Number one, it's Crown Zenith, a good set already. Number two, they have two of the most pivotal characters, or sorry, Pokemon in Sword and Shield era as figure collections, as shiny Pokemon with a pin, with 10 packs of Crown Zenith in there. So it's a great thing to put in your shelf. You get good stuff in it. And also the timing of this. This has come out at a time where Sword and Shield is slowly on the way out. Scarlet and Violet is on the way in. I'm not saying there's a, there's a small amount of these kicking around. There's a lot of them. People have got a lot of them. Stores have got a lot of them. But I would say I would rather hold on to this than the other collection boxes that dropped on the first day. I would choose to hold some of these rather than the ETV, in fact. Gives you that bit of extra, extra vavavoom, if you will. The Lucario promo from the ETV isn't that crazy, in my opinion. And yeah, I, these are really cool. I was surprised when I saw there was 10 packs in it. I was surprised to see the figures look so cool. And I just think it's a really cool set. So yeah, guys, grab some of these. Get some good cards from the Galarian Gallery, from the Crown Zenith set. If you like them again, keep them, grade them, keep them for a rainy day. If you don't like them, move them on and continue to pull. We have a Hatterene VMAX right here. 
That is a beautiful card. Look at that. Look at the texture on this. It's so funny as well how certain cards struggle because of what the Pokemon is. Oh, and the Absol is beautiful hollow. Obviously, we all know Umbreon is way more popular, therefore a way more sought after card than Hatterene. But this card right here really does give me Umbreon VMAX vibes, you know? Does it, you guys? In terms of the artwork, for sure. It's a really nice pull right there. All right, next pack. A lot of darkness energies today, right, guys? Pink Urchin, Rare Candy, Chatot, Galarian Mr. Mime, Sunkern, Bidoof. Oh my gosh, we got a Slandit, and then behind that, we got a Cricketoon. Oh, and then we have a Duraludon VMAX. Duraludon, I missed that Pokemon. I used to play VGC. People on the channel have been asking me if I'm going to return to VGC. I just I just I haven't played Scarlet and Violet, and I, I'm not really in the zone to play VGC. I loved it at the time. I was going to Malmo, I was going to tournaments playing it. COVID sort of got in the way, and then I doubled down more into the Pokemon stuff. But then when kind of COVID started to come back, so did all my other things, you know, with the podcast, with other, other filming, and other, other, you know, things in life. As now I have a baby too, which is great. Very, very good stuff. But... I have less time now to put hours and hours into VGC, and you have to be good at it. You have to put hours in to be good at it, and I'm just not going to be that good at it, you know? Uh, anyway, this pack right here, we have a... Nice! A Darkrai V-Star. One of my favorite cards from this set. And Absol Hollow again. Love that. And I'll say this Darkrai V-Star is a, an example here. This card is actually not as highly priced as I thought it would be, but it's one that I love. I think the artwork is absolutely stunning. I think Pokemon is a strong one. It's a legendary. Lauren Gallery, Crown Tennis, great set. This is the kind of card that I would hold on to for years to come. I'm not saying it's going to go crazy at all, but I do see it being one that is underrated and still viable and still wished for for collectors in the future, you know? So again, I would love to have that on my shelf with an ace stable graded. I would love, love, love that. So therefore, I'm not afraid to keep that or I'm not afraid to put some more money in, get a few more copies and then to a buy. You know what I'm trying to say? It really is just down to personal preference, but also sometimes your personal preference is also everyone's personal preference. Like we all like Umbreon. Everyone likes Umbreon. Everyone wants Umbreon. That's why the price goes high. It's just for me. Next up, oh my gosh. And a Raikou V right here. Again, this is a card I actually think is still quite pricey right i've pulled this card so many times as well what a collection box this is being guys so not only am i saying these are these are a good box to have seems like the pools are crazy in here too obviously i'm probably luckier than most right here but still <laughs> any more glaring galleries I'm, i want more man i'm addicted now but yeah great set and uh sometimes when you get a great set like this people just be like oh man it's a great set but it's printed into oblivion everyone loves it therefore no one loves it type of thing everyone has it therefore no one wants it kind of thing but i got I guarantee you guys in 10 years to come nice manaphy if you have a few boxes of Oh, nice. He's got Bay as well. If you have a few boxes of Crowns there, if you have a few packs, I guarantee people would rather open that than, you know, a lot of other sets that people like to hold. So, I don't know. And above all else, guys, as we all know, people like to just rip open packs. I love to open packs. It's not all about investment. I know, I know I'm going to make this entire video to be investment, but you can also apply what I'm talking about there to anything else. That's where it comes from. Everything comes from that, that idea of kind of the value of the cards, because even the price you pay for the packs, even if you're trying to fill a bind, if you're trying to get cards to play in, in decks, it all comes down to what is the, you know, price of the set what 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 is the you know market rate going right now what is the interest in this set etc etc then we have a radiant charger book let's go <laughs> that's so funny you got radiant charizard and you got radiant charger book two very different cars but two very similar names but yeah this is a great box right here guys we're doing really well with this one also it's worth saying laura did upload loads of disney 100 cards onto the store so you want to get some singles make sure you guys go and check that out as well as the boxes we did have singles because we did open some as you guys saw i got the uh the, the steamboat steamboat willy i haven't graded it yet i will send it asap though Ace is launching Y soon. I did make that <laughs> well known in that video. We got a Mew Art Rare right there. Let's go. Mew Art Rare. And then we got a Pangoro. Wow, two more packs to go. Any more cards to pull? This is actually a phenomenal opening right here. Some really like fantastic cards being pulled. Fighting Energy, Gravelar, Great Ball, Gloom. It's all Doom and Gloom. We got Cherubi. Execute. Come on, give us something fire. Rock Ruff with the Moon. Purloin. We have a Love Disc. I love this game. Yanma. And a Yan Mega. It evolved. Well done. Happy for it. And here we go, guys. The final pack of the video. Let's see what we got. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, four from the back. We have a. Ooh. I'm not going to pretend I didn't see that. I don't know why I just forgot. Gloom. Friends in Sinnoh. Layer on. Baltoy. Come on. Last pack of the video. Galarian Meowth. Energy Retrieval. Shinx. Larvesta. Come on. Come on. Oh, nice. Radiant Charger Book. So, wow. Two Radiants in each box. I'd love to open some more of these and see if that is something regular that happens in these Zacian and Zamazenta boxes right here. But guys, second box right here has been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, Zacian definitely win this one, guys. Two Radiant Charizard, Char Jabug, sorry, Mew, Manaphy, Art Rares, Raikou, Dark Rai, Galarian Gallery, Krikatoon, Art Rare, and then another Hatchereen VMAX special art as well. So actually unreal right here. Very, very strong indeed. Across the board, both pretty good boxes right there we love to see it but there we go guys that is it for the video yeah i was making sure the transition looked cool the figures look so good like this right really really nice but yeah thanks for watching guys appreciate it as always pokemon.net h grading if you want to grade your cards i'll see you guys next time for the next video peace